sit with our hearts as we gather to worship. If you just folks for a few moments, you're very, very welcome here today. And uh, as you can see, we want to uh, celebrate the Lord's Supper, but maybe in a way it'll be a little bit different than usual, but I'll explain just in a few moments. But just if you bear with me, just a few uh, quick announcements. First of all, the little Bible study. Having great times just meeting on Wednesday night uh, for study and working through this little Warren Wearsby book called Stand. It's a study looking at Ephesians chapter 6 of the armour of God. And this is the last one that is still for sale at the price of one euro. And uh, if you would like just to gather it for just your own reading or to maybe still join us on Wednesday night for the Bible study, it would be wonderful. Wednesday night, again at half seven. We meet in a big, huge circle just here at the front of church, and uh, again, just with draft and so on as well, just to allow you to be uh, just air flowing and so on as well, with kind of COVID regulations. Next Sunday, a little bit of a change, uh, just in that for the summer, Newton Church are moving to 10 o'clock. And we're running this, as you know, at the minute, 45 minute services. So, uh, session were very gracious to me on, on Tuesday past as we met, and again, just with the whole regulations at the minute. Um, session can be uh, on special occasions, but for committee meetings and other meetings, other than prayer and Bible study, it's really just um, Sunday morning worship. But we met on, on Tuesday night with all the details for summer and starting back in September to discuss. And session were very gracious to me to say that for, for the summer, Rye will meet at 11.15, which allows me to then have half an hour, and as we do at the minute, for me, from Rye to Newton, as opposed to the summer, just for the two months. It's the other way around. Uh, but it means that we meet at 11.15 for 45 minutes, so we'll still be finishing at 12 o'clock. And so we'll be the same as usual, other than we're 15 minutes later. So you have another 15 minutes in there if you need it. Um, but please just uh, we appreciate uh, just kind of passing word with that as well. And uh, just uh, to all the gathered on Sunday. Next Sunday as well, I'm actually in Fawn Waterside Church, still with the vacancy there. And James McKean, James will be taking the service here. Uh, so just to a few little details, say summer Sundays, 11.15, James next week, the little Bible story. What we're looking to do for a minute, because they're fiddling, okay? So the little fellowship cups, could you lift it, just could you, just take your hand, so that whenever we come to communion, we're not wrestling and fighting with them, okay? So they're, the little cup, if you look at the very top, there are actually two films that you need to peel back. And even just now, you just peel them uh, just a wee ways so that you're, you're kind of half in. If, I know you can't see it close enough, but there's a really thin film at the very, very top. <laughs> and if you need any help, please speak to the person beside you. Was it Charles said earlier, she's not made for a farmer's hands. Um, so just there's a little thin film at the very top, and that takes you into the little biscuits wafer. Okay? And then the hard bit that sticks out, like your little milk cup whenever you're maybe in a cafe and you have that funny UHT milk. Um, so there's a hard piece and you peel it back and that will take you to the little cup. The little cup. So a very thin film and then the harder part is the second film. Just so that we're not kind of tumbling and stumbling later on. Anybody need a wee bit of help just before we... We're all good. And what we'll do later, folks, just as we each, we will, we will eat and drink together, just in the act of communion later, whenever we're, we're leading each other. But if everybody's got your, <laughs> got your, head, your head around it, um, but they're fantastic. Churches all over the island are, are using these little cups at the minute, because it's all we can use just in regards being able to celebrate communion and keep them COVID safe as well. But we set our things. We come into God's presence. Psalm 37 and verse 7 says, Be still before the Lord 
and wait patiently for him. I know certainly for ourselves and rise here to the moment, uh, just there's so much illness and concern in our lives and uh, just in, in the family of faith here. But we read, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. So with those words in our mind, we're going to stand together and worship and let and honor are going to lead us uh, as we sing, be still for the presence of the Lord. So, and just as we sing, we'll stand together and whisper quietly behind your masks. But thank you. Mm -hmm.
Remind us that your death on the cross was our ransom, and that the symbols of bread and wine before us on the table remind us of your body broken and your blood shed for the remission of our sin. So in these moments, Lord, remind us of your grace. Assure us of your mercy as we come before you in repentance and with thanksgiving. So lead us, we pray, in Jesus' name. together um, from 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 3, and we're going to read from verse 8 through to verse 18. So 1 Peter chapter 3, from verse 8 through to verse 18. If you've got a Bible, we we'll look at it up just to give you a little bit.
for Christ. So if we're thinking for Christ, die for sins once for all, for Christ, there's the who, there is the person uh, that we're looking at, for Christ died for sins. So the who in this verse takes us to Jesus. Then in Philippians chapter 2, and uh, again that very familiar passage of scripture, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking on the nature of a servant. I mean this Christ him in Philippians 2, which is just wonderful, takes us to the who of Jesus, it explains Christ's death on the cross in our place, but it explains who Jesus was. He was the God of all creation. And Paul picks that up as well in Colossians, in Colossians chapter 1, where again, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. He goes on to say that God in Christ, who made the whole earth, is the God that we find in Jesus who then in this verse tells us died for our sins. This is who the Christ is. He is the God of all creation. And yet, we'll look at the what and the why just in a moment. I picked up a little poem and then discovered actually it's a song many years ago that just helps explain the who and the person of Jesus. His holy fingers made the boy that grew the thorns that pierced his brow. And the nails, the nails that pierced his hands were mine in secret places that he designed. He made the forest from where there sprung the tree on which his body hung. And he died upon a cross of wood, yet he made the hill on which it stood. This is the who in this verse. For Christ and even in those words, and especially in the word Christ, is the God of all creation who has come to give his life for you and I. Let's keep going. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous. Well, again, using Roger Kipling's model of the six questions, here's the what. Why did Christ die? Well, Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous. And that reminds us of the price. We're thinking of the who and the person for Christ. We're thinking of the what and the price that was paid as Jesus died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous. That's you and me. And actually when you unpack that a little bit further, thinking still about the what, Christ died for sins. That takes us to the whole place in scripture about sacrifice. Hebrews 9 verse 22 tells us without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So Christ's death on the cross was that picture of sacrifice for sin all through the New or the Old Testament into the New Testament as Jesus comes. And Peter even reminds us in, in chapter 2, verse 24, that he himself bore our sins on his body on the tree. So when we think about the what Jesus died for our sins, we're thinking there as a sacrifice of atonement to pay for our sinfulness. More than that, look at the scope of our the sacrifice of Jesus. The scope once for all. He was all sufficient. Jesus' death on the cross was once for all. Chapel Pliny, one of the commentators I look at, says, Christ suffered and died to pay the price for sins fully and finally. It's complete. When Jesus on the cross cried, it is finished. It's because the sacrifice was complete. We're reminded in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 11 to 14, about Jesus giving the sacrifice once for all, and then he sat down at the right hand of God. And actually, one of the things in the temple 
is that there were no seats for the priests to sit on because their work was never done. There's no place or no time for sitting down because sacrifice needs to happen again and again and again. But here the scope of the sacrifice of Jesus, Hebrews 9, 28 tells us it's for all people. Hebrews 10, verse 12 tells us it's for all time. And Jesus sitting down, then at the right hand of the Father, says that it's all done. Let me read just a few verses, please, from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 11 through to 14. Verses 11 through to 14. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made as footstool, because by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. So when we look here at the scope of the sacrifice and the price paid of Jesus on the cross is once for all. Again, another man, A.M. Stibbs, says this, the one event achieved the complete and final settlement of the issue raised by the sins of the unrighteous. Isn't that fantastic? So Jesus' death is sufficient to deal with our sinfulness and make us right with him. The righteous for the unrighteous, again reminding us here that Jesus was our substitute. In Romans 5, we read these words, verses 6 through to 8. You see, at just the right time, when we were still harvest, Christ died for the ungodly. And very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So the who? For Christ. The what? For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous. The sacrifice of Jesus, the scope of that sacrifice, and his place as our substitute. And the final part is to bring us to God. That's the why, is it not? That is the purpose of Christ's sacrifice. To bring us to God. To restore the relationship. The relationship with God that was ruined in the Garden of Eden was restored on the cross of Calvary. And that's what the bread and the wine remind us of today. That Christ's release, Christ's death on the cross restored that broken relationship. When, when God came down into the garden to walk with Adam and Eve after they had eaten of the fruit and they were hiding from God, and the Lord calls, where are you? Well, the rescue mission was Jesus to come and restore that broken relationship. And do you remember in the story of the cross, and actually Matthew, Mark, and Luke all recount this incident, at that moment, when Jesus gave up his spirit, at that moment, the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And that picture indicates to us that God was ripping the curtain that separated man and God through sacrifice in the temple, ripped from top to bottom this huge, massive curtain. And it was a miraculous thing that happened, but it happened as Jesus gave up his spirit, and it is God saying, from top to bottom, it come from heaven, that barrier was taken away because of Jesus' death on the cross. And so in Hebrews again, Hebrews 5 and 16, the writer says, Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we might receive mercy and find grace to bring us to God. Do we get that packed in this verse? 
we have the who, the what, and the why of our salvation for Christ. What? Died for sins. Once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, as our sacrifice, as our substitute, the scope, once for all. Why? To bring us to God. And that's with the little cup that we have today, even though it's very unusual, that is just symbols to remind us of God's great salvation. Do this in remembrance of me. Friends, this is Christ's table. The bread, the wine, the invitation to eat and drink are all his. He is the host and we are the guests. And so everyone who confesses Jesus as Lord from whatever branch of the church you come are welcome in this place and at this table. Jesus invites us to come saying, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. He who believes in me will never be thirsty. Whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. Jesus also invites us by saying, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And the Apostle Paul reminds us of just the words of the institution, the words given by Jesus in the upper room, where he says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and wine and gave thanks. And now following his example and command, we in his name and by the same authority take these symbols of bread and wine to be set apart from all common use to this sacred use. Can we take a moment and pray together please? Our gracious God, we remember in this supper the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world. With joy we praise you, our mighty God, for you created heaven and earth and all they contain. You made us in your own image and you kept your covenant promise with us even when we fell into sin. We give you thanks, our God, for Jesus. We thank you for his life, death, and resurrection, opening the way to everlasting life for us, sinful, broken, and disobedient people. And we join our voices with all the saints and the angels and the whole of creation to proclaim the glory of your name. In the joy of this resurrection life, Lord, we offer ourselves as living sacrifices. Please send your Holy Spirit upon us to give us strength to stand for you. Send your Holy Spirit upon us now as we reflect and remember your work on the cross. Send your Holy Spirit upon us now, we pray, that the bread we now break and the cup we now share may be for us a reminder of our redemption as we come to you in need of your grace and mercy. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And friends, if you can remember too, just we'll, as we use the little elements, we. Eat and, drink, eat and drink together. 
So accordingly, to the example and command of our Lord Jesus Christ, and as a memorial of Him, we do this. The Lord Jesus, on the night He was betrayed, took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it, and He said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So take and eat. In remembrance that Christ died for you, feed on him in your heart by faith and with thanksgiving. same way, Jesus also took the cup, saying, This is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. So friends, drink in remembrance of Christ's blood, we share for you, and be thankful. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love. Give us grace and open the way to glory for us. We pray that you will keep us firm in the faith that you have drawn us into. Thank you for your sacrifice on the cross to pay the penalty for our sin. And thank you for the gift of righteousness that you give to us. For the symbols today around this table that remind us of your love and your grace that is vast and deep and far beyond all measure. Help us, Lord, to live in a way that honours and displays your goodness. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand again together and worship God as we sing the wonderful words of how deep the Father's love for us. And then just after this we'll share a prayer of benediction together. But we stand together and again whisper uh, and worship behind our masks as Donna and Lynn.
May our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who came with grace and truth, also fill your hearts with grace and truth as you serve him in these days. And may the joy of the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be your strength. Amen.